Whether you're new to the preparedness community or you just think it's a waste of time, it's becoming more apparent by the day that we're in a bit of a mess for the foreseeable future. Acknowledging that future isn't without fear and the stress with what comes next. And with any crisis, immediate ones and the ones that stretch over days, weeks, or months, we have only a few responses. We have fight, we have flight, we have freeze, we have flop, and then we have friend. And the response that you develop now will determine your response in the future. And your future response just might be the difference between life and death for you and your loved ones. So let's talk about it. If this is the first time we've met, my name is Chris and welcome to my channel. For those that have been around for a while, you probably noticed that I updated the background. Uh, I just recently overhauled it last week and we're gonna be making some additional changes over the next few weeks. I just honestly got tired of the last studio where I was so far away from the camera, so I thought I'd get a little closer and hopefully a little more personal. So in this video, I just wanna talk about this topic for a little while. And again, these are kind of videos that I just try to think about things, what I see what's going on. I try to analyze my own views on preparedness. And I'm sure a lot of you probably have similar concerns and questions. And every few months, what I try to do is I try to pull back and I try to reevaluate my progress in my preparedness journey. And with everything swirling around us right now, I always wanna ask myself and evaluate as to whether I'm focusing more on fear or more on action. Whether a disaster strikes overnight and we're all plunged into a struggle to survive, or the grid goes down for a few days, or we must agonizingly watch our nation and the world descend into what I consider a slow motion collapse, it's hard to acknowledge the devastation that we know is coming. And it's hard to accept that we aren't crazy and that things appear to be getting worse. And honestly, I'm having a bit of a hard time myself trying to stay optimistic, but I am not allowing myself to give in to fear and I'm not allowing that to dictate my life. It's something that I have to monitor frequently to make sure that it doesn't go down that path. And there's really only five responses to fear as far as I can see it. We can get mad and fight. We can end up, you know, screaming at strangers on the internet or yelling from our cars at bad drivers. And we can turn on the news and you can see enough of that happening lately. We can take flight and try to retreat from it all to escape temporarily or at least forget about it for a while. And we might, I see this a lot, wholly freeze up and feel paralyzed with no clear path forward. When faced with fear, we may flop and surrender to it completely. And finally, we might take the friend approach and seek comfort from others who have the same views on this quagmire that we find ourselves in. The human mind's response to the shot of adrenaline, elevated heart rate, sweats and shakes, it's pretty well documented, yet we often fail to recognize it in ourselves. When we don't recognize it, but internalize it and try to ignore it, we can turn it into a crippling disorder ranging from panic attacks to social anxiety to PTSD. Fear is real, and the fear of the future is real as well. And the important thing to note here in all this is that there is a way forward. There's a way to lessen the impact of stresses about the future. And to me, this is what I consider the work of prepping. I started this channel <clears throat> a little over seven years ago. And if you're already a subscriber, you know we take a practical approach on this channel to try to meet the challenges in the future. We look at the real threats we face and we try to provide you with practical solutions that you can begin working on today to position yourself for a better tomorrow. What you won't find on this channel is us droning on about the unrealistic scenarios and threats that some focus on. I don't get into politics or other divisive rhetoric or really even give a lot of time and attention to things that I really have no control of, such as constant, the constant threat of nuclear war that we really seem to find ourselves, it almost seems like daily, there's some threat from Russia or somebody else that if you move in on us, we're gonna nuke you. And look, nuclear war, while it is a possibility that we sometimes address as tensions between super, uh, superpowers rise, it's not our primary focus here because it is less likely to occur, but more likely to occur is something like a power grid failure, municipal water failure, a food supply disruption, a natural disaster striking, and other disasters that if you turn on the news, you can see seemingly increase with a more frequent basis. In my personal worldview, <clears throat> and I don't know how many of my subscribers agree with me, is that here in developed nations that here in the west or countries like china the us europe 
we're all living in the early stages of collapse. And that's just my view on how I see things. I might do a more breakout video where I kind of explain that a little more uh, uh, detailed way. Most third world nations, they've been going through this for quite some time. But these issues that we're now beginning to experience uh, seemingly on a more regular basis that other countries have had to deal with pretty much their whole lifetime, they're finally beginning to impact us personally. I have lived in third world countries and I've lived in poor nations. I've seen the real struggles that people go through just to provide food for their family on a daily basis and not be, uh, you know, to, you know, they have to live with the concern of, you know, is their house going to be bombed? Is, uh, you know, is their child going to catch a disease that will forever just, you know, alter their lives or, or, or you know, cause some physical damage? And when I've been in nations like that, when I come home, I find myself really kissing the ground that I walk on when I get off the plane. And the problems others experience on a daily basis in some of these nations, they simply have never been our problems until now. And I, again, I don't want to try to compare the two. I realize we still have an amazingly high standard of living for most of us here in Western nations. But we're beginning to see the things that other countries have just had to deal with for a long time. There's, it's, it's really more of a world going to hell in a handbasket, I feel like that we're going right now, you know, that we see uh, when we turn on the news, that's what the feeling is at least. We're, we're finally seeing the final stages of a green revolution which allowed us to produce enormous amounts of food where we could leverage science, fertilizers, and machinery to really coax unnatural levels of production yield from very select and genetically engineered cultivars. And we realized the zenith of distribution, meaning demand, when we receive same-day delivery of items that we just click on to purchase online. Just the impact of that can be seen in the retail industry. And our ability over the last several decades to terraform uninhabitable zones of the world and then artificially supply them with water and electricity may have also reached a zenith of sorts. Beyond these obscure signs of decline, we are seeing more frequent diseases and sicknesses more extreme and prolonged weather patterns, and a host of other anomalies. And there's really no doubt that it can be frightening to bear witness to. And I remind myself that it's not the multiple events such as the Spanish flu, the World, uh, World War, the Great Depression, the Dust Bowl, and the polio that our ancestors had to live through. Those issues converge seemingly at once at a very short time frame. And we're not running from volcanoes. The majority of us are not fleeing war zones. As I pointed out many times in my videos, humanity has faced many struggles before, and this time it's no different. It's just that we haven't experienced anything quite like this in my generation and likely your generation, especially here in the West. And in some ways, we have to remind ourselves that we still have it pretty good for the most part. And still, the next step, at least for me, isn't to cower in fear from the uncertainty of the future. It's to look at it squarely and acknowledge that I may not be able to see it clearly or make it through unscathed, but my prepping and my work today will put the odds better in my favor. We won't ever know how devastating the future might be. Talk to any disaster survivor and they're probably going to tell you the same thing. I never imagined it could get that bad is a common refrain that you often hear from these individuals. Preparedness requires you to imagine how bad it can get. And that can elicit fear in you, or as it does for me, it can make you want to do something about it, to be proactive. And I'm not powerful enough as one individual to stop a storm from striking, but I can get my preps to endure the storm and its aftermath. Imagine if each of your neighbors prepared to survive for three weeks, independent of the infrastructure, with, the, with their own uh, backup food, their water and energy to last them that duration. The community next to them, though, may not be prepared in any way and probably looking an awful lot like your current community. They would register every single downturn, every extreme event as a major disaster. So recognizing how uncertain but dangerous the future is, I choose to work. I decide to help others to understand the threats and provide them with practical steps they can take, both big and small, to lessen the pain and impact of the future. If I am right, and we are in the early stages of a slow motion regression and collapse, the world might survive better through preparedness, at least those that are willing to listen, to learn, and implement the necessary approaches that I try to provide on this channel. It will assuredly collapse into an unrecognizable horror if we do nothing. If we just surrender to our fear, we rail against it futilely or adopt any possible responses of fear other than putting in the hard work now. And I'm not going to live in fear, and I encourage you not to either. To that end, I'm making some significant changes in my life and my livelihood. 
My main drive at this time is to focus on what I can practically do while staying educated about the challenges that will impact my preps, my family, my future. And I would encourage you to please keep those two things separate, the threats and the actions that are needed to move forward. We can sit and stew in our problems or we can be proactive. And I know many people, and you probably do as well, who have locked themselves into a cycle of stewing and complaining about the world. And that seems to me to be counterproductive to me. And honestly, I have to be careful with what I say uh, around others. As I study these things and I continue to learn about the world around me and the challenges that we face collectively over the next several years, the next decade, I find myself wanting to share with others, but I found that it rarely ever goes well. As such, I've kind of learned to keep things to myself. And I had this channel up for a little over, I think, seven years now. And I feel like there's, again, I've, I've shared this in a recent video. I feel like I've only really scratched the surface. I feel like I've got my preps in order. I know what to do if something happens. But the next phase, the next evolution, the next cycle, whatever you want to call it, where I feel I'm at today is the transition over to a self-sufficient lifestyle that I'm actively working on this year. I'm again acting or I'm moving into a phase where my primary objective is to learn the skills and to implement to allow me to, you know, produce my own electricity, my own water or, you know, my own food. And there's a lot that's going to go into that, but I'll increasingly be moving this channel in that direction and I'm working on projects behind the scenes to provide really what I hope is real practical advice to help you move in this direction as well. We've been rolling out videos over the last few months discussing the steps that you need to follow to get ready for gardening. If you go to my gardening playlist, you can see, I think I've got four or five that are, uh, they're all listed part one through five. I've got a couple more coming out in the next few weeks. And we're gonna wrap up the series uh, again in a few weeks, and then we're gonna start the practical implementation, taking everything that we explain in those videos. And I'm actively working more on understanding backup power options. I've got plenty of, systems that companies have set, uh, sent to me, but I'm more working on understanding how to build them out myself uh, for various reasons. And I'll be doing videos sharing that experience as I learn as well. And I'm glad to be on this journey and I'm pleased to be able to share it with you. Here's my final encouragement to you. Don't get caught up in the fear, but get carried away with the work to be done. Don't stress about the work that's still to be done, but focus on the work at hand, the things that you can do. Do what you can with the time and the resources that you have at your disposal. Would I like to do more? Of course. Am I making progress? Yes. Am I allowing myself to get locked into fear of the future? No. Ask any survivor, and again, they'll tell you they survive by putting one foot in front of the other, one task after the other. Take a deep breath, hold it for a second, and then let it out. If you can do that, it means you still have time on the clock. Your journey's not done, and you can still prepare and make your future better, less impacted by the tragedies that we assuredly will face. Let the future not cause you stress, but rather I hope it encourages you and motivates you and invigorates you today. As always, stay safe out there.